because your disc, your disc is on my list. Because your disc, your disc, I can't resist. Because your disc is on my list for 2019. <laughs> one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, it's the one you've been waiting for. It's the grand finale to Tom's 2019 year-end spectacular-ish in which I reveal my favorite albums of 2019 along with a few honorable mentions. But before I get to any of that, I want to get something off my chest that's been bugging me for like the last four months. It's something I was going to mention in the introductory video uh, just a couple of days ago, but I forgot to. I owe you guys an apology. Now, what I mean by that is, uh, see, back in August when I was uh, vlogging Skip's Going Out of Business Sale, one of the clips that I filmed, I was standing by the Christian Music CDs. And I, I didn't even catch myself doing it at the, at the time, but ever since then, it's been bugging me a little bit more and a little bit more. Uh, when I said the word Christian, the phrase Christian Music, I rolled my eyes. I'm kind of in the back corner where the uh, country and uh, folk and Christian music are. See? There it is. I did it. It's, oh, go. Okay, you can you can stop stop the uh, replays. I'm I'm cringing enough as it is. So yeah, I mean it's like like I said, I, I barely noticed myself doing it at the time, but ever since then, it's been bugging me more and more. You see, I'd like to think that I'm better than that. What do I end every video with? Life's too short to be a music snob. And see, there I was snobbishly rolling my eyes at Christian music. I'd like to think that. Over the years, the months and years, I'm slowly growing as a person. I'm becoming more tolerant, more uh, will accepting of you know other people's views and lifestyles, if you will. It's just just been. You guys might have forgotten about it if you ever, ever even saw it, but but I didn't, and so I, I just wanted to apologize to end the year and the decade, or or begin the new year and the new decade by getting that off my chest because it was bugging me. I mean, hey, if I if I want people to be tolerant and respectful of my not being religious, it's, I, I all I can do is reciprocate. That's what I have to do as a person. So, there you go. I, I apologize for that. I don't know if you felt like I owed you an apology for it, or if, as I said, you even remembered, but there we go. So, anyway, now that we've got that out of the way, let's get on with the matter at hand, my favorite albums of the year list. Now, as usual, this list was very aggravating to do, to, you know, pick just those 25 albums to put on the list and what positions to put them in. But, you know, at the same time, this list was a whole lot of fun, and it's probably a little bit more fun than it's ever been before. And the main reason for that is several of my YouTube friends, uh, whose uh, links to their YouTube channels you will find in my description below, uh, they each had a hand, either directly or indirectly, in at least one album landing on my year-end list. So yeah, my friends, my YouTube friends, have kind of been influencing my U my music tastes in a way. So, And uh, by the way, I will try and be sure to give credit where credit is due in that respect as I go through my list. Uh, now, speaking of the list, you will find some surprises on it, uh, not just in terms of stuff that you may not have heard of, uh, since I haven't even mentioned some of these titles until today, uh, but also in terms of my music listening habits, as you have known them thus far. Uh, I've gradually been exposing myself to a bit more hip-hop and country in the last year or so, and you'll see a little bit of both in this list. And another surprise in this list will be uh, my album of the year. Uh, kind of like Barbara Streisand last year, it's something that I, I don't usually fall in love with so much and would have hardly expected to be at the top of my list. So, uh, but hopefully you will, ref uh, you know, exercise your patience and actually watch the whole video. Uh, now, there are, of course, some albums you will not see on this list, uh, either because I didn't have the time or the inclination to listen to them. I wish I did, but I only have so much time in the day and this channel is a hobby. Uh, or I just plain missed out on them. And, and that is what, uh, as you saw in my introductory video, my second thoughts of the year list. That's what that list is for. Uh, hopefully I will find some uh, albums I didn't know about this year, uh, next year, and will fall in love with them by, uh, by Christmas time of 2020. And uh, there are actually some major albums that I did listen to, but are not on this list. Uh, Lizzo's Cause I Love You is the main one that comes to mind. And it's not that I didn't like them or hated them. It just means that I didn't connect with them, that I, I didn't love them enough to put them on my year-end list. 
uh, and now that I am streaming, I fully expect to listen to a lot more albums that way in the coming years uh, before deciding whether or not to actually buy them in physical form. Uh, so, and further along that train of thought there, this, uh, I'm fully expecting this to be the last year, uh, the last end of year list, in which all of the albums that I rank will be ones that I bought physically and can show you on camera. Now, I would like to say that I reviewed most of the albums that you'll see in this list uh, in fo some form or another, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't do as many album reviews as I would have liked to have done this past year, uh, since, uh, as I explained in my intro video, I was not often in the proper headspace to do album reviews this past year. Uh, but then again, album reviews have never been uh, a big part of my channel anyway, and I'm honestly not sure how much a part of my channel they will be going forward in the months and years to come. Uh, I, I mean, I still love doing uh, the Now and Then feature. I, I think that's a unique twist on the album review format that uh, I, I can call my own, that I, and I've really enjoyed doing those. Uh, and maybe the way I talk about new albums, uh, aside from the Now and Then videos on occasion, will change from, you know, full-fledged reviews to something a little more informal, you know, maybe shorter, quicker reviews. Uh, I, I do kind of plan on doing that in a way uh, up in the coming year. You'll, hopefully you will see the results of that. Now, as for the timing of this list, uh, you probably notice that most music YouTubers like to frame their year-end lists between uh, December 1st of the previous year through November 30th of the current year. Well, not me, because I'm not like most music YouTubers. Uh, yes, I like to line my uh, year-end list up with the calendar year, so from January 1st through December 31st. So uh, that's, I guess, one thing that makes my YouTube lists unique. Uh, and also, you will notice that I very deliberately call my list my favorite albums and not the best albums. That's just because my rankings are not based on how innovatively produced an album might be, or how well-crafted or catchy the songs were, or even an album's cultural impact or artistic merit. Uh, it's simply based on how much I enjoy the albums, uh, how often I came back to them, and how strongly I, I connected with them. And because that's, honestly, to me, that's really where the real beauty is in music, is the way it touches us emotionally. And so that's, to me, that's what music is all about, is how you connect with it emotionally and not intellectually. And last but not least, uh, I'm going to state the obvious here. This list is my opinion. I mean, all music YouTubers lists are their opinion, but, you know, so it should go without saying, but, well, you know. Uh, so, yeah, you can laugh at it, roll your eyes at it, be baffled by it, or be amazed by it, but don't call it wrong. My list isn't any more wrong or right than yours is. Uh, but, hey, maybe I'll turn you on to some music you haven't yet heard or haven't even heard of. So... Now that the jibber jabber is out of the way, let's get on with the list. Uh, I decided to limit my list this year to 25. Last year I did 30, and in combination with the other lists that I did last year, it was just a little too overwhelming. I think the finished product didn't turn out quite as well as I'd wanted it to. Uh, so yeah, I'm taking it a little bit easier on myself this year. Uh, so I've got 25 uh, actual ranked albums with five honorable mentions. So let's get on with the honorable mentions, shall we? First one is Lover by Taylor Swift. Uh, yeah, I I wasn't wowed and enamored of this album quite as much as everybody else was. Uh, I'm just not not the Swifty that uh, a lot of other people are. Uh, she, she's a good artist. I will not deny that. Uh, I, I really enjoyed 1989. I like that album. And this, this one I enjoyed too. Uh, Jack Antonoff uh, was uh, being the producer on this album was was only a positive thing in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, it just you know didn't connect with me as strongly as a lot of other. Uh, albums did this year. Some very, very good songs on here, no question about it, but uh, yeah, I, I liked it enough to give it an honorable, honorable mention, but just not enough to actually rank it in my albums, uh, possibly with her next album. Maybe that'll be the case. Second album in my honorable mentions list is Weezer's Black Album. Yes, it might be an unpopular opinion. Uh, a lot of people did not care for this album, at least amongst Weezer fans. Uh, other than maybe Ryan at True North Reviews, I think, yeah, you Ryan, you had it in your actual album rankings, didn't you? Uh, but yeah, I've got it an honorable mention uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, this is the year that I really got into Weezer. I actually uh, accumulated their entire dis discography in this one year. And this was the first Weezer album that came out at the time I was a Weezer fan. So I picked it up and I enjoyed it. It may not be a great album uh, amongst Weezer albums, but hey, in my opinion, any Weezer album is a pretty darn good album. So I had to at least give it an honorable mention. What more can you say? Uh, keep it up, Weezer. I am definitely going to... Uh, I'm looking forward to your 2020 release. Uh, 
yeah, we'll see where that uh, ranks in the scheme of things. Next up on my honorable mentions list is one that I really, really wanted to rank in my top 25, but uh, the fact that I limited it to 25 uh, just resigns it to the honorable mentions list. That's not to say it's not a great album, though. It is. It's fantastic. Uh, it is a cover album, though, so that probably subconsciously, I guess, uh, played into the, pa the fact that it got knocked down to the honorable mentions, but it's still a wonderful, wonderful album. It's one that is not to be missed, in my opinion. It is Walking to New Orleans by George Benson. It is his tribute to Chuck Berry and Fats Domino. Uh, just a fantastically done set of cover songs uh, from those two legendary rock and roll uh, artists uh, with George Benson's uh, unique twist on it. I mean, hey, it's George Benson. Come on. He's a living legend uh, paying tribute to two not living legends. But uh, yeah, uh, especially my favorite on the tr album by far is Blue Monday, his rendition of the Fats Domino classic. But every single track on this album is just fantastic. Uh, do yourself a favor and listen to it if you haven't yet. Just wonderful. My next to last honorable mention is uh, another one that's a little bit unusual and uh, one reason why it ended up in honorable mentions and not in the ranked albums. It's just this, it's a little, you know, it's different than pretty much all the other albums out there. It is, it's such a good feeling, the best of Mr. Rogers. I guess it, it's, it's, it's going to have a limited, uh, a narrow audience focus, but it is just an absolute joy to listen to. It's wonderful. It brings back that spark of childhood that nobody should ever completely, totally let go of. It's just, I mean, every song on here is just an absolute treat. Uh, I, I I just totally loved it. It, as I said, brought me back to my childhood when I listened to it. So yeah, it was just one of the highlights of the year. So yeah, don't miss it if you haven't listened to it yet. And finally, last but definitely not least on my list of honorable mentions this year is one that I was really, really torn on this. I have such mixed feelings over this. Um, it, well, it is Threads by Sheryl Crow. And uh, yes, this it, this was the year, it seemed, for excessively long albums. Uh, Khalid and Hosier were two of the other uh, offenders in that respect. Uh, and yeah, this one was 17 tracks. Uh, it, the disc was almost filled to capacity. I, I, I started out, when I first heard this album, I just thought it was just me being too hard to please this year. But uh, no, it turns out, yeah, this first of all, there was just so darn many songs on this album. And of course, the hype over the all-star list of uh, featured guest appearances on this album, you couldn't not get your hopes up for it. And also the fact is that um, my sister was a huge fan of Sheryl Crow, and uh, I also really enjoy Sheryl Crow. I mean, look at her uh, earlier discography. Look at the, some of the songs that she's put out. She's a fantastic artist. But honestly, if this album, if she had cut four to five songs off this album, you know, reduced the number of songs and concentrated more on refining the songs that were left, this would have been an absolutely amazing album, honestly. So, uh, yeah, this was just a, uh, a a casualty of she was just trying to put too much into this album, I think, just trying to jam pack it a little too much. But yeah, if she uh, less would have been more for this album, definitely. So yeah, and and but I refuse to put this on my disappointments list. I absolutely refuse to do that because I am not giving up on this album. I'm going to come back to it two or three times this year to see if. Uh, if I appreciate it anymore. I, and I really hope I do, because I, I really like Sheryl Crow, but yeah. Unfortunately, it is an honorable mention. Okay, are you ready for this? My list of my top 25 favorite albums of 2019. Let's do this. Kicking off the list at number 25 is Sunsets and Full Moons, the sixth album by The Script. Now, I've got a soft spot for these guys, I have to admit. Uh, I've not liked their last two or three albums as much as I've wanted to. But, you know, I, I refuse to give up on these guys. I, I know that uh, Ryan, particularly Ryan at Truth, True North Reviews, actually put this on his worst albums of the year list. I'll try not to hold it against you, Ryan. But, hey, there's, there are some good songs on here, after all. Uh, just not as many as there, there should be, actually. Uh, Hurt People, Hurt People is one of my favorite songs, probably my favorite song on the album. And uh, the opener, Something Unreal, is another really, really good one. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, there are nine tracks on the album. You know. Two of them are the only ones that I could really highlight, so that's one reason why it's so low on the list, but hey, as I said, I've got a soft spot for these guys. What can I say? Next up on my list is the first album by this veteran rock band in 13 years. It is Who by The Who. Yes, uh, long-time fans of this band or fans of their classic stuff might be underwhelmed by it, but uh, in my opinion, this is a very, very strong set of songs uh, from top to bottom. Uh, Roger Daltrey's voice is as strong as it's ever been, and uh, Pete Townsend's songwriting is still fantastic. He hasn't, neither of them have lost very much in the last uh, several decades, in my opinion. 
but yeah, it's an excellent album. Definitely check it out. My number 23 favorite album of the year is uh, something a little bit different. Uh, I don't think any of my fellow YouTubers mentioned it at all, either on their year-end lists or in their channels in general. It is Camila Mesa and the Nectar Orchestra with their album Ambar. This is a delightful slice of uh, Latin-flavored jazz. It's just wonderful, relaxing music to listen to, uh, uplifting also. Uh, the songs are sung in several different languages, and uh, it's a mixture of covers and originals. It's just wonderful. Um, I actually, one of the reasons I liked it so much is it's actually the last album that I picked up uh, per totally on impulse from Skips. It was actually at the very beginning of his going out of business sale. Just the cover art just totally intrigued me, and I looked up on uh, uh, online, and the description sounded interesting. I hadn't even listened to any of the songs, but yeah, it turns out to be to have been a very very pleasant surprise. It took a while to grow on me but I, I really enjoy it. Coming in at number 22 on my list is a country supergroup. Uh, you probably already know which album this is. It is The High Women, their self-titled album, and yet it's a, a mix of great talents that is uh, more than the sum of their parts, in a way. And that's not to discredit the talent of the individual members. Uh, they're all very talented in, in their own right, but this was just a very, very enjoyable bunch of songs. Uh, Loose Change was one of the my favorites, uh, one of my favorite songs of the year, in fact. It's just a great metaphor that they put into that song. And Redesigning Women, I mean, it, this is just a strong female empowerment album all around. Just wonderful and fantastic. Number 21 on my list is, uh, it's actually one of the surprises. I never thought that an album by this artist would end up on my year-end countdown. And in fact, I was, I was originally expecting this one to be ranked higher, but it ended up just being that there were so many other better albums out there by the end of the year that, uh, it was at number 21. It is Post Malone and his album Hollywood's Bleeding. Uh, yeah, just, as I said, I never thought that Post Malone would end up, end up on my list, but uh, you know, he is generally a hip-hop artist, or at least he was uh, with his earlier albums, but yeah, there's much more pop and rock and other influences on this album that I just, it was just kind of irresistible, honestly. Uh, Allergic and Circles, and of course Sunflower and Wow, Two of the uh, were some of the outstanding songs on here, and "Die for Me" was one that unexpectedly grew on me a lot this year. So, yeah, uh, honestly, there's uh, a lot has been said about this album, and you know, hey, believe the hype. Uh, yeah, Post Malone, Hollywood's Bleeding, is at number 21 on my list. Now, barely making the top 20 of my list this year, uh, despite the fact that when I reviewed it in a collaboration with the quotable Shyok earlier this year, I thought it was going to rank a lot higher at the end of the year, kind of like Post Malone is the debut album by Sigrid. It is called Sucker Punch. It's just a solid pop album overall, and this is actually one that Garrett over at Young Entertainment Specialists brought to my attention initially. So thank you, Garrett, for uh, cluing me in on this album. It's just, yeah, as I said, it's just a great solid pop album all around. Fantastic uh, songwriting. Uh, she's got an excellent voice that uh, shows itself in a couple of different ways on this album. So yeah, uh, lyrical diversity in an album by one vocalist is something that, that's got to be admired. Uh, yeah, Don't Kill My Vibe and uh, Basic and Mine Right Now and the title track are just a few of the just standout songs on this album. So go check it out if you haven't yet. Sigrid Sucker Punch, my number 20 favorite album of the year. Now, coming in at number 19 on my list is uh, one of the most recent additions to it. Uh, that's one reason why it's ranked so low. I I'm still digesting this album, quite frankly. It is Everyday Life by Coldplay, but I have a sneaking suspicion, I have a very strong suspicion, it's only going to grow on me over the coming months uh, by leaps and bounds, I think. Uh, yeah, when I first heard it, I will admit that I wondered what the hell am I listening to? That was my first reaction, uh, because it just seemed so odd and disjointed, And but after listening to it a couple of times, I realized what Coldplay was trying to accomplish with this, and it reminds me in a way of uh, a documentary movie, a crowdsourced documentary film that kind of uh, birthed on YouTube. It was called Life in a Day. It was, uh, you know, people posted basically video snapshots of their daily life on one specific day of, of a certain year and uploaded them to YouTube, and then the director and producer uh, edited them together to form basically a snapshot of people's lives around the world. And so that that's what this album reminds me of. Uh, but yeah, it's just, when you listen to it all the way through and a couple of times, it starts to gel, as at least it did for me. So yeah, an excellent album. Give it time to grow on you, because it, it uh, you'll be rewarded. Now number 18 on my list uh, probably takes the cake for uh, my most unique listening experience of the year. Uh, it is Sturgill Simpson's Sound and Fury, and it is actually one that Ryan over at True North Reviews clued me into. 
uh, yeah, I, I had tried out Sturgill Simpson before, and just he just didn't do it for me on his previous albums. And of, also, I had seen this at the stores and just you know ignored it because of the rather apocalyptic-looking cover art imagery. It just didn't look like something I would get into. But yeah, Ryan convinced me to check out uh, the album on uh, streaming, and I listened to it and was just captivated by how unique and how varied uh, the sounds are on this album. I mean, it's got a very much of a hard blues rock foundation, but he incorporates all sorts of other uh, sounds in it, uh, so, uh, even a little bit of disco and a little electronica, a little country. So yeah, it's you won't get bored listening to this album. Uh, Best Clockmaker on Mars uh, was one of the highlights, in my opinion, and Mercury in Retrograde was another one that just, I mean, there's an animated movie that uh, went along with this album, and at least, to me at least, uh, it doesn't lose anything uh, not having seen that movie. Uh, but yeah, it's just a fascinating, fascinating listen. Uh, the way that he actually tied the uh, the songs together by uh, you know being uh, drifting down the radio dial between each song, it's the stat static of uh, turning the radio dial. That's just one thing that makes it unique, a very, very unique listen. Yeah, Sturgill Simpson's Sound and Fury is my number 18 favorite album of 2019. Now, number 17 on my list is uh, just about as far as you can get from Sturgill Simpson in terms of genre or sound. But, so hopefully you won't get whiplash when I show you what number 17 is. But uh, yeah, Backstreet Boys, DNA. It surprised me. What can I say? Um, yeah, I, I had cooled off on the Backstreet Boys sound for, what, six or seven years before this album. They're just, you know, just nothing they were putting out was really intriguing me at all. Uh, but when I when the single from this album came out, Don't Go Breaking My Heart, uh, what was it, about a year, a year before the album came out, uh, I kind of liked it. it I, I didn't love it, but I liked it. And so I decided to, when the album dropped, or just before the album dropped, I decided to check out the other singles. And uh, hey, it convinced me to pick up the album, and I was rather surprised. It reminded me of the incredible vocal synergy of the guys. Uh, just, you know, their sounds, when they sing together, when they harmonize, it's like no other uh, boy band out there, or man band, I guess you'd say, uh, with their ages now. And yeah, it actually convinced me to pick up the albums uh, in the intervening years that I missed. And uh, yeah, I've come to uh, have a new appreciation for the Back Backstreet Boys, a renewed appreciation for them. And yeah, this was number 17 on my list. Uh, Passionate is one of my favorite songs on this album. And uh, Chances was another one that was really good. So yeah. Now up next on my countdown is the first of two instrumental albums in my list. Uh, and I'd, for some reason, I'd almost forgotten about this album. I almost forgot it came out when I was putting my year-end ranking together. So yeah, I uh, gave another few listens to it, and uh, what do you know, it jumped up to number 16. Uh, it is the latest album by snarky puppy, Immigrants. And uh, I loved their last album, Culture Vulture, which uh, actually won a Grammy Award for either instrumental or jazz album of the year. I can't remember which. It's just a fantastic, uh, nebulous jazz collective. I mean, they have... Uh, a constantly rotating roster of artists coming in and out of the band. And I first found out about these guys uh, because of their collaboration with a favorite artist of mine, Jacob Collier. But yeah, this is just a great blend of jazz and funk and some soul and a little bit of rock influences in here. But yeah, just don't miss out on these guys if you haven't listened to them yet. Snarky Puppy is a, a, just a great band, a great instrumental band, one of the best out there. Now, coming in at number 15 on my list is another artist that I never imagined would be in my year-end countdown. Uh, it is Anderson Pock with his album Ventura. And yeah, I uh, kept hearing about the soul and R&B influences on this album, uh, and that it was reaching beyond the hip-hop that Anderson Pock was known for, so I gave in. I had to check it out for myself, and I was just absolutely amazed at how good this album was. I actually reviewed it this year with the quotable Shyok. Uh, he and I at both very much agreed with this album. It's one of the most cohesive listens from front to back that uh, of any album this year. It just, when you put the album on, you, it's over before you know it. It was just such a good, a fun listen. And I mean, he's got a bunch of great uh, high profile uh, guest artists on this album, Brandy, Smokey Robinson, Andre 3000, but heck, he almost didn't need these guys uh, on this album. It's just so good from front to back. Uh, pick any song on here and it's just wonderful. Uh, but yeah, just one of the most pleasant surprises for me of the year was Anderson Pock with Ventura, number 15 in my favorite album, albums of the year countdown. Okay, number 14 on my list, and this one might be a bit of a controversial pick because I think a lot of people were disappointed in this album. I believe it didn't end up on anybody's best of list that I've seen. Uh, anyway, it is Love and Fear, the fourth album by Marina, formerly known as Marina and the Diamonds. And yes, it fell into the trap of being an overly long album along with Khalid and Hosier and Sheryl Crow. 
so it does have that strike against it but uh, I didn't want to give up on this album uh, it's the first album that I picked up by Marina while I've been a fan of hers uh, I, I started to like her stuff a couple of years ago I picked up fruit was the first album of hers that I picked up and I really kind of fell in love with her stuff and so I, I, I stuck with this album. I didn't want to give up on it. And yes, it took about six months before I really started getting into it. But it's just uh, been growing on me more ever since then. I mean, just so many good songs on here. Handmade Heaven, Karma, uh, Life is Strange, and Enjoy Your Life are two of my favorites on the album, as well as To Be Human and Orange Trees. I mean, there are a lot of tr tracks on here that just really have grown on me, as I said, in leaps and bounds since I picked up this album. Uh, and, and yeah, it was one of those where I thought, okay, was it just me that, you know, I'm hard to please this year? But yeah, it was one of those that was definitely a grower over the months. So uh, yeah, Marina's Love and Fear is my number 14 favorite album of 2019. Now, number 13 on my countdown is the second of two instrumental albums on my list. It is Reveries by Rob Simonson. Now, I almost re relegated this to the honorable mentions category just because it's very different from all the other albums on this list. But uh, when I re-listened to it in preparation for this countdown, I was reminded of how relaxing and therapeutic a listen it is. And it just that just bumped it all the way up to the top 15 of my countdown. Uh, yeah, if, if you need a good stress reliever after a long, tough day at work or at school, you cannot beat this album. Uh, it's basically piano melodies at the core with uh, surrounded by a bunch of uh, synthesized or sometimes organic uh, atmospheric uh, sounds built around those piano melodies. And uh, yeah, Rob Simonson is best known to me anyway as the composer of the score from Love, Simon, one of my favorite movies of all time. And he's also scored or co-scored a bunch of other movies. But yeah, this, this is very different from uh, his uh, score work. But yeah, as, as I said, if you need a relaxing, therapeutic album uh, after a long, stressful day, you cannot beat Reveries by Rob Simonson. Uh, and oh, another thing that made it uh, endearing to me is that it has a local connection. Rob Simonson actually worked at the record store I bought this album from, coincidentally enough, uh, for a while. So he's got that kind of a, a local connection that attaches me more to this album than it might to uh, most other people. But yeah, number 13 on my list is Reveries by Rob Simonson. Uh, fantastic and very unique listen. Now up next in my countdown is uh, another album kind of like a Snarky Puppies Immigrants that I almost forgot came out this year. Uh, yeah, and it's it's a shame. I'm, I'm glad I remembered it uh, while I was getting ready to do this list. It is Mint by Alice Merton. And now for a while, this one and Sigrid Sucker Punch were actually in pretty much opposite places on the countdown. And uh, when I uh, rediscovered this album, so to speak, hidden in my library and re-listened to it a few times, it just jumped right up uh, several pegs. And unfortunately, uh, Sigrid's Sucker Punch got knocked down a few pegs in my countdown. But uh, yeah, I'm very glad that I was reminded of this album. Uh, now, I obviously had heard the song No Roots, one of the big singles off this album, uh, back when it came out. And that was, wasn't that in 2018, I think? Uh, and, and I really enjoyed it, but I obviously didn't make the Alice Merton connection until uh, she did a duet with Tom O'Dell on his recent album Jubilee Road last year. And so that's when I paid attention to the album and uh, listened to some of the clips and then eventually bought the CD, obviously, and really, really enjoyed it. Uh, it's just a fantastic album. Uh, unfortunately, slipped under my radar uh, for a while. I don't think I bought it until the summer this year. Uh, but yeah, two kids lash out and uh, Funny Business and uh, Honeymoon Heartbreak are just a few of the excellent songs on here. So yeah, if you have not heard Mint by Alice Merton, definitely check it out. She is a, a rising talent that I, I think we're going to see great things from in the months and years to come. And boy, we are just fast approaching the top 10, aren't we? Number 11 on my list is an artist that I would normally rank higher because he, you know, he's one of those that's almost guaranteed a spot in my favorite albums of the year list whenever he puts out an album. It's just he had such stiff competition this year that uh, he ended up just out of the top 10. Uh, it is Jamie Cullum with his most recent album, Taller. And just, I mean, it, it's not that he uh, does anything different than what he normally does. I mean, this is just, this is great uh, jazz pop that he he's... Uh, consistently put out over the years. Uh, just, I mean, you put the track listing up on a dartboard, throw a dart at it, and you'll hit a good song. I mean, uh, The Age of Anxiety is one of my favorites. Drink is another good one. And unfortunately, one of the things that kind of knocked this one down in a way is that some of the best songs on the album are actually only on the deluxe version, which, which I happen to have. So, you know, if you listen to the standard version of the album, you're not going to get these tracks. Like, Work of Art is 
probably my favorite on the album, but again, it's only on the deluxe version. But yeah, Life is Grey and Usher, and it's and just pretty much all of the tracks on here are, are good, at, at least good. Some Most of them are very good or excellent, but yeah. Unfortunately, his album as a whole didn't quite make the top 10, but hey, number 11 is nothing to sneeze at. Okay, now, claiming the number 10 spot on my countdown is one that we actually have Ryan over at True North Reviews to thank for uh, compelling me to listen to it uh, based on his review of the album on his channel. It is Rex Orange County and his new album Pony. Now, this is a, possibly a controversial pick because uh, longtime fans of Rex Orange County will tell you almost universally that this is not his best work. Uh, I happen to really enjoy it, so it's my introduction to him, so I don't have his previous albums to compare it to. But I, I really, really, really enjoyed this uh, kind of a bedroom pop or lo-fi pop kind of uh, aesthetic that he's got going on here. It's just it's just fantastic and, and very uh, personal and introspective lyrics. It's just it's just just a really all-around enjoyable album. And, you know, again, with pretty much all the ones on this top ten list, you, as I said, throw a dart at a track listing on a dartboard and you're going to find a good song. Uh, so I, I couldn't even begin to name the best songs on here. But yeah, give a shot to uh, Orange County, Rex Orange County's Pony, if you haven't yet. It's just a fantastic album. My number 10 pick for album of the year. Now, my number 9 album of the year is uh, kind of like Marina. This is uh, an artist that I've enjoyed for actually for a lot longer than Marina, but the first album of his that I picked up as a new release. It is Western Stars by Bruce Springsteen. And this is, I knew coming into this that it was going to be very, very different from his previous work. This is much more pop and much less rock than his previous albums. But uh, Springsteen has always been a good storyteller with his songs, and uh, so I knew I, we, I knew we were going to get that from him. But yeah, just this, the lush um, 70s Laurel Canyon kind of pop stuff, and, and as kind of suggested by the album cover, a little bit of country influence as well, just paints a gorgeous, gorgeous album from front to back. I mean some of the best stuff I've heard all year, even if it isn't the most ear-catching and tuneful and, you know, make you dance kind of music. It's just it's just not that kind of an album, but it's just fantastic. Uh, a very, very well-crafted album in all respects. I mean, uh, Hitchhiker is just great, and I, you know, again, I, I could name just about any, any song on here. Uh, what's the one that I really like? Tucson Train is one of the standouts. As I, you know, this is not an album for everybody, but uh, Springsteen has not lost a bit of his uh, talent and uh, his artistry, in my opinion, on this album. It's just fantastic, and it's a very worthy addition uh, to the top ten at number nine on my list. I sometimes wonder if I shouldn't rank this one higher. Now, my number eight pick is uh, probably going to be a surprise to, well, everybody who watches my channel, because I don't think I've even mentioned this guy yet. But I picked up his CD. It was new and sealed, but I picked it up for $4. Uh, That's kind of the same way that I picked up the, the New Respects that I mentioned in my Second Thoughts uh, list a couple of days ago. But yeah, this guy really took me by surprise. His name is Dylan LeBlanc, and this is his album Renegade. And it's just uh, fantastic. It's it's kind of like a Tom Petty meets John Mellencamp in a way, but he's got a, a higher tenor voice, uh, kind of like uh, kind of like Brett Denon. And that's probably one of the reasons why I was... Uh, attracted to his sound so much is because because he's kind of got that Brett Denon thing going on and uh, you know some some jangly guitar so it's kind of a, a folk rock folk pop sort of thing that's just fantastic and I mean he, he's just got great lyrics in his songs just it's just an all-around wonderful Americana folk rock sort of thing I guess is the best way to uh, call this stuff uh, the title track uh, Domino Magenta and uh, two of my favorite songs Born Again and Damned which both have uh, uh, lyrics pertaining to religion. It's something that, uh, in a way, uh, often fascinates me. I mean, with certain artists' takes on religion in songs. But yeah, if you have not heard of this guy, check him out. Dylan LeBlanc. He has uh, rightfully earned, in my opinion, my number eight ranking for favorite album of 2019. Okay, and lucky number seven on my countdown uh, also happens to be able to lay claim to the most viewed video on my channel, which if you watched the introductory video at the beginning of this week, you know who I'm talking about. It is Sarah Bareilles with her latest album, Amidst the Chaos. And uh, this is an artist who, uh, in contrast to some of the other, other artists on my countdown, I've been following her since the beginning, uh, since her debut major label album, Little Voice. And uh, it, with this album, she captivated me with this album, uh, because she took on a little bit more of a uh, change in direction. She did a little bit more of a roots slash acoustic thing on this thing. So kind of a almost a folk rock sort of thing, kind of like Sheryl Crow, but in my, in my opinion, better. Not to disparage Sheryl Crow. I mean, she's still great, but uh, yeah, she, she just really 
caught my ear in a whole new way with this album. I mean, some of the best songs of her career on here. Armor is probably the best song on the album. Miss Simone is a gorgeous song. Uh, Fire, Poetry by Dead Man. I mean, you know, from from top to bottom, this album is packed with great songs. Uh, she has a feature with John Legend on this album. Uh, not that she needed the help, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just, as I said, just a fantastic album. Uh, one of her best yet. Okay, now number six on my list. Uh, now, when most YouTubers do their albums of the year list, they like to frame them from uh, December 1st of the previous year through November 30th of the current year. But, uh, well, I'm unlike most YouTubers out there. I like to do my uh, year-end lists uh, in conjunction with the calendar year. So as a result, this is the newest uh, album added to the countdown, and it has the benefit of appearing on my year-end list before uh, just about anybody else's. And it is the new album by Harry Styles, Fine Line. Now, I really enjoyed his first album, his previous album, but this one just took me by surprise. And a, a few other people, there are actually two people, uh, one YouTuber and another one that who's a friend of mine from work, and they actually both cite his album as one of their favorites, and I was completely not expecting that. So yeah, that just shows how he has just transcended pretty much all musical tastes. Uh, you know, it's, it's just a fantastic album from top to bottom. He had me with the did it dips on Golden right from the start, and he did not let go for the entire album. Uh, he just, he's, he's kind of got a bit of a, an Elton John sort of a thing to him, a little bit of a Freddie Mercury vibe in a way. He's just, uh, he's a tremendous talent that I, I just did not see well, obviously, you wouldn't see uh, back in his One Direction days. So, but yeah, once he broke out of the One Direction mold, he was he just hit the ground running and has not uh, stopped since. And I cannot wait to see what is on his next album, because if it's if it's better than this one, the way that this one was better than his first album, get ready, people. I mean, is, this is just a fantastic album. Uh, Adore You is one of my favorites. Uh, Sunflower Volume Six. I really enjoyed that, even though it's. Uh, I've heard some people say it was not one of their favorites. Uh, Canyon Moon. I mean, just, hey, as I said, put it on shuffle and listen to a song, and you're going to love it. But yeah, Fine Line by Harry Styles, my number six favorite album of 2019. Okay, number five. And uh, this one is actually kind of surprising and a little bit disappointing in how low he ranked, uh, because in the three times that he's put out an album since I've been a fan of his, this is actually the lowest he's ranked. Uh, one year he made number one on my list. Uh, but yeah, this is Wouter Hamill and his latest album, Boys Town. It's just, it's a fantastic uh, amalgamation of pop influences from pretty much every decade since the 30s. He does, you know, Tin Pan Alley and, uh, you know, 40s and 50s pop. He's got some 60s and 70s and 80s sounds mixed in. I mean, he just, he's just all over the map on this album in the best way possible. But yeah, he's, uh, you know, there was just so much, as I said earlier in the countdown, so much stiff competition that, yeah, he's he's still in the top five, hey! But uh, yeah, I mean, just, and, and again, just fantastic songs on this album. Uh, Jordan Sky is great. Um, Live It Up is another one. Uh, oh, gosh. I, I, I could name any song on this album. Just, uh, if you have never heard of Wouter Hamill, and chances are you haven't, uh, give his most recent three albums a try. Uh, pick any album, you're going to like it, and pick any track on any of those albums, I think, just about, and you're really going to enjoy them. But uh, yeah, Wouter Hamill, um, hopefully he'll stage a, a, a comeback in terms of uh, being on my year-end lists and rank higher with his next album, but hey, number five is uh, nothing to sneeze at, and it's, it's a fantastic album all around. Boys Town by Wouter Hamill. Now, speaking of albums that uh, surprised me with how far away from number one they ranked this year, uh, is my number four selection. Uh, for quite a while, this album was uh, fighting with what you will see as my number one album in a few minutes here, over the number one and number two spots. I kept swapping them back and forth for the longest time. But in the last two or three months of the year, you will see that two other albums snuck into the number two and number three spots. But still, number four is absolutely nothing to sneeze at. I love this album for many, many reasons. It is Oklahoma by Kebmo. And uh, you've heard me talk about Kebmo uh, several times. This is the year when I really, really got into Kebmo. And uh, also, uh, Noah from SMEB Reviews is indirectly responsible for this album uh, appearing on my radar at all, let alone being uh, in my top five. Uh, see, he was born and raised in Oklahoma, so whenever Oklahoman uh, towns or cities or attractions are mentioned in song lyrics, he kind of takes notice of them because he's he's kind of proud of his uh, Oklahoman heritage. Uh, so naturally, when I saw this album on the new releases list, I saw the title Oklahoma. It's like I had been waiting for an excuse to really give a try, a good, honest try to Kebmo, and so I figured, you know, that was the cosmos's way of telling me 
hey, this is your chance. So I, I went out, I picked this album up, and as you can see, it did not disappoint at all. Uh, it's just fantastic. And the funny thing about it is, uh, Noah didn't care much for this album at all, but then he's not a, uh, blues is not his thing, um, either regular traditional blues or contemporary blues like Kedmo, uh, but still, you know, what, like it or not, uh, Noah is responsible for this. Every time I see this album or listen to it or look at it, it reminds me of Noah. So that's just one reason of several why it's number four on my countdown uh, and could very well easily have been higher than number four. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's only got 10 songs, but uh, its brevity is no strike against it. Uh, the title track could be uh, the Oklahoma Tourist Board, Tourism Board could use uh, for their in their commercials or something. I mean, it's just a, a kind of an anthem for Oklahoma. Uh, Put a Woman in Charge is one of the standout tracks on here. It's a duet with Roseanne Cash. It's kind of a, a female empowerment anthem, and it kind of tells, you know, hey, we couldn't do any worse. We'd probably do a lot better, in fact, if we put a woman in charge. And, and that's, I, I feel that personally, honestly. But yeah, every song on here, I mean, I Should Have is kind of a tongue-in-cheek uh, commentary on his love life. Uh, not based on reality, I don't think, but you know, it's just, it's just a funny song. So yeah, he puts a lot of humor in his lyrics, and uh, Don't Throw It Away is a, a uh, treatise on recycling, how we should be recycling more. So this is a fantastic album all around. Uh, it's just and very worthy of my top four uh, in any position. I mean, depending on my mood, I could put this album anywhere in my top four, and it would it would have earned a spot there. So yeah, Oklahoma by Kev Mo. If you have not checked this album out, give it a try. He is an artist very, very much worth uh, checking out. Okay, now number three on my list. We're almost there. We're almost at number one. Number three is another one that Garrett over at Young Entertainment Specialists is responsible for, and I am so happy that he brought my attention to this album. It is Inflorescent by Friendly Fires. This is just fantastic. Uh, get off your feet and dance kind of dance pop, synth pop kind of stuff. It's, it, this is a party on a disc from front to back. It is just fantastic. Just a lot of toe tappers. If you don't at least bounce in your chair uh, sitting at your desk while listening to this, uh, you're dead inside, honestly. Uh, and I, the funny thing is I had never heard of these guys until Garrett reviewed this uh, album on his channel. And I, I heard the clips on his in his video that he intercuts to, and that just caught my ear. So I had to go on and listen to the entire album. And next thing you know, this was in my collection, uh, in my CD collection. I had to special order it from my local store. But it, it was worth every penny. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Garrett, for bringing my attention to this band. It's just fantastic. Uh, Heaven Let Me In is a fantastic track. Can't wait forever. I mean, you know, this is another one, like all of the ones in the top five. Put it on any track on the album and you're going to be dancing in no, in no time. It's just fantastic uh, anth uh, album for, you know, if you're in a down mood, if you want to cheer yourself up, put this on. It's, it's guaranteed to lift your spirits. Just fantastic. Inflorescent by Friendly Fires is my number three favorite album of 2019. Okay, now my runner-up for my favorite album of the year. This one kind of surprised me at how high he ended up ranking. Uh, not that it surprises me that he put out a great album. I mean, he, he always does. He, he's one of the artists who, uh, whenever he puts out an album, I'm most likely going to buy it. Uh, sometimes even before I've heard any of the songs off of it. And he almost always, every year that he puts out an album, he almost always is guaranteed a spot in, usually in my top ten. And that's the thing is, he was actually ranked in the lower half of my top ten until just a few weeks ago when I started doing the re-listening and ranking of the albums, and he just climbed right up to number two. The songs just uh, had grown on me so much. It is My Name is Michael Holbrook by Mika. This is his fifth album, I believe, and uh, as the cover kind of suggests, this is just great uh, technicolor flamboyant pop like Mika is, has always put out. He's one of the most consistent artists. Not that that's a bad thing, I mean, because consistency on in terms of Mika is a very good thing, uh, and this is actually one of my favorite albums out of his last few. Uh, his Ranking his albums would be a tough thing for me, honestly. They're all so good. But yeah, A Tiny Love is a great opener, and that has a bit of a, a bit of an Elton John kind of flamboyance to it, in a way. Dear Jealousy, uh, oh, Tomorrow is another great song. Uh, Blue is one of my favorite songs, it's, and that's kind of one of the more understated songs. It's kind of an ode to the color blue and all of its different meanings in the English language. So just, I mean, just Every song on here is uh, just fantastic. Uh, it's the, the position on my ranking speaks for itself, honestly. So yeah, give Mika a try if you haven't yet. Uh, he might not be your thing. Some people don't care much for the the more fam flamboyant, uh, bubbly... It's, it's ear candy. I mean, some people are, don't cotton well to ear candy. <laughs> cotton candy, get it? 
but anyway, uh, yeah, he's my number two favorite album of the year is Mika's My Name is Michael Holbrook, and he has earned that ranking. Okay, now are you ready? Here it is, my number one favorite album of 2019. And those of you who have been paying close enough attention have probably deduced what this album is already. Uh, Ryan, you probably knew what this album was before you started watching the video. But uh, yes, before, without further ado, my number one favorite album of 2019 is Tales of America by J.S. Ondara. This is an absolutely gorgeous album. Now, uh, I saw it back um, when it came out. I saw it at the record store uh, in the CD, and I it intrigued me enough to pick it up, turn it around, look at the back cover, and read the little blurb on the back cover, and then I just put it back. Uh, not sure of what it might be like or if I would be intrigued with it or not, but uh, uh, first Garrett over at Young Entertainment Specialists reviewed it uh, not long after I first saw it, and he gave it an absolute rave review, and then, and I'm not sure if I bought it before or after, Ryan over at True North Reviews also reviewed it, and his review was just as glowing. And uh, so, yeah, I just absolutely had to pick it up at that point and was uh, was convinced that uh, it was worth listening to. And my God, was I was was I right? This is just an absolutely mind blowing album. Now, we already know that, at least according to me anyway, music is an art form, but this elevates it to a whole new plane of art, if you ask me. I mean, these are, as the title suggests, tales of America that only an immigrant could tell. I mean, this guy is a, a Kenyan immigrant to the United States. Uh, his voice is very reminiscent of um, Tracy Chapman. So if Tracy Chapman were a guy and a Kenyan immigrant, uh, J.S. Sundara, but the vocal resemblance is, I mean, that's pretty much where the resemblance ends. I mean, this guy, not to uh, discount Tracy Chapman, she is a fantastic artist in, in her own right, but this guy just paints such beautiful stories with his songs and with an achingly gorgeous voice. His, his voice is kind of up in, toward that upper tenor range, kind of like Tracy Chapman. And the sounds on this album just vary all over the map. Uh, you get the full band kind of sounds, like with uh, the first single, Saying Goodbye, which is a gorgeous song. Uh, and then you have a, a few songs on the album that are kind of the small acoustic jazz combo kind of a sound, you know, with the upright bass and uh, the guitar and, and whatnot. Uh, Lebanon is one of the standout examples of that sort of a sound. And then you've got two or three songs on here which are just... Jay Sondara and his solo uh, acoustic guitar. Uh, Television Girl is one of the best examples of that. And then you, you've got one song on here that is completely a cappella, just him and his voice alone. And that one, and in fact, to a degree, most of the, uh, pretty much all the album, is, but especially that song, Turkish Bandana, sounds like it was recorded in an empty cathedral. I mean, there's just this uh, otherworldly echo in the background of the voice that just gives these songs such completely new life. I am honestly almost tearing up just talking about these songs. They are just so unbelievably freaking gorgeous. Every single song on this album is a standout that you've got to hear if you have not heard this album yet. Uh, Master O'Connor, uh, which is, in a way it's kind of disturbing because you know his use of the word master kind of implies as though it were a, a master and slave relationship that he's, he's singing about. So that kind of gives it, I don't know if it's an intended uh, double meaning to the lyrics, but uh, yeah, that kind of gives a, another kind of a ghostly, if you will, um, uh, interpretation of that song. And there's another song called Torch Song, which I think is the, uh, it's the second track, the uh, s uh, second track of the album. But yeah, every single track on this album is just completely worth your time, worth listening to. Stream this album right away. It is fantastic. And it has very, very well earned my spot, my ranking for my favorite album of 2019. Tales of America by J.S. Ondara. Do not pass up listening to this album, honestly. So, what did you think of that list? Uh, let me know down in the comments. I am dying to know what is your favorite album of the year if you have not done a YouTube list of your, uh, of your own. If you have, I've most likely seen it. But uh, yeah, just uh, this was a fantastic year for music. Uh, it, it took, as I said, a while for a lot of stuff uh, for me to get into, into a lot of the titles. But then it's, I, I attribute that, at least in part, to the fact that I was not able to fully pay attention to music as, as much as I wanted to. But uh, yeah, it was a wonderful year. And if 2020 is anything like 2019 was, uh, buckle up, buttercup. It's going to be a ride. So uh, anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, here's to a great 2020 in music. Uh, suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. 
as you could tell from the uh, recommendations that they gave me on these albums. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a great and happy new year. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.